All right, welcome back to the channel. So Tyson Fury's cheating might have paid, played a big role in the judge deciding to force him to fight Deontay Wilder because we know that the truth is a defense to defamation. Let's talk about that in this podcast. Right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay. Okay. So according to sources, and these were sources actually that it came out and I had talked to during the uh, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury arbitration or mediation process had spoken with them. I didn't share any of the information at that time, verified it afterwards. Um, but pretty much Tyson Fury, one of the reasons that Tyson Fury lost the arbitration to Deontay Wilder is because the judge believed that there was enough evidence to prove that he cheated, that they wouldn't listen to an argument about defamation. So let's go through this. Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury were supposed to have a rematch of their last fight that they had. I believe that it was in 2020. Was that 20 February of, yeah, it must've been February of 20, uh, 2020. After that fight, Tyson Fury wins, and there's a lot of talk about Tyson Fury cheating. People, not Deontay Wilder, but people from all over the world started doing videos, showing pictures of his glove, and making accusations about De Tyson Fury cheating. So after a bit of time goes on, Deontay Wilder comes out, and Deontay Wilder makes a public statement. The statement that Deontay Wilder made said that he believed, he believed that Tyson Fury had cheated him that gloves are not supposed to act like they were acting in the ring, that his legs were gone, all kind of different things that he said he believed were related to Tyson Fury that Tyson Fury did. Now, so after that, Tyson, and he gave two reasons for this. Now, the reason why I'm giving the two reasons is because these two reasons that he gave in public are gonna be the two reasons that he gave to that judge to justify during the arbitration phase right where you're actually hearing evidence and making arguments right they had to make an argument to the judge about why he shouldn't make that fight and their arguments were in two pieces two points one that the con that the plain language of the contract said that it expired and then the second one is even if you say that the contract's not expired Deontay Wilder's actions after that justify Tyson Fury walking away from the fight because why because Tyson Fury de because Deontay Wilder defamed Ty Deontay Wilder defamed this is their argument defamed uh Tyson Fury when he accused him of cheating and right and when you accuse somebody of cheating that's a damage to their reputation and since it's a damage to their reputation it's a dam damage to their earning potential all of those type of things right so he says Tyson Fury's team says, first of all, it expired. Second of all, even if it didn't ex expire, what he did after the fact was so egregious that we shouldn't be forced to fight a guy that defamed me, right? Just like you shouldn't be a force. Yeah, the guy broke in and shot me in the leg. So you think I have to fight a rematch with him when this guy comes into my house and, and put something in my leg? Absolutely not, right? There'll be, there are certain things, violations of the law, things like that where the, the arbitrator could have said, yeah, we're just not going to do that. Yeah, that's way over the top, right? So use your logic. And this is something that I had heard, like I said, during the mediation. But as these things play out, Tyson Fury then has to make an argument because it, it, during the mediation, Tyson Fury and, 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 and Bob Arum refused, obviously, to just agree to fight him. So then they had to move on to the arbitration phase and they made their argument. Again, we know the argument because they've made these arguments in public, right? So what does the judge say about these things, right? Now, first of all, he says that as far as the expiration of the contract, it didn't expire because Bob Arum, you were the person that asked, it, asked Deontay Wilder to extend it. The con It was supposed to originally be in October, 
you then said that no, the ESPN, because we're in the pandemic, they want to push it back. You were on tape, and, and trust me, the judge would have all of the tapes of all of the interviews that Bob Arum did, all of their public statements. So Bob Arum said in public that the fight couldn't happen in October because of the pandemic, and that it couldn't happen in December, or yes, it couldn't happen in December, I believe, because ESPN and Fox, now remember, this is Bob Arum saying it. So when Bob Arum says ESPN and Fox, Bob Arum doesn't have a relationship with Fox. Bob Arum has a relationship with ESPN. So he knows that ESP, what we know for sure is that Bob Arum knew that ESPN wanted to push that fight back to February. And since that's the network and Bob Arum is the one asking and communicating with, with Deontay Wilder's team about the changes in dates, the contract did not expire. The contract was extended by Tyson Fury's team on multiple occasions. So you can't take just the plain reading of the contract. You also can take in other information like emails and the fact that you're sending emails and having conversations that people are, that are testifying to saying that you changed the date. I'm not sure what world you guys live into in, but just because you don't have to write everything down on a piece of paper for somebody to be able to prove that you said it and that you intended it. It was just obvious. So right there, out goes your whole the contract expired argument. But the defamation argument, and I do believe that this is why they got hopeful, right? They got hopeful, oh, we can get out of this because when we go and we prove and we accuse him of defamation, then we'll get out of it because he defamed you. Only problem is the defamation, the defense of defamation is the truth. You can't tell some, you can't sue somebody for telling the truth about you. If you walk, break into my house and you steal my TV and I see you on camera and I have you on camera and then I go to the police and say, this guy stole my TV, you can't sue me for defamation because certainly it does defame you. However, it's the truth. I have you on tape stealing my TV. We found your TV in your house. I am free to tell people that you're a thief because I proved it. Same thing happened with Deontay Wilder and the cheating. The gloves bending at ridiculous angles. The fact that you can clearly see the man's knuckle in the glove. The fact that you have probably do have toxicology reports where that says, no, this was in his system at that time. You also have videotape from the MGM Grand because once people start hiring lawyers and they start subpoenaing, subpoenaing things, they're gonna get all of the footage, not just the cameras that you see. When you go into Vegas, just you see some cameras, but that's by far, that's not anywhere near all the cameras they have in there. The most you can do when you cover up a camera in a Vegas locker room is Vegas is cover up that television camera. You cannot care, cover up the surveillance that the actual MGM Grand has on you. So you are able to then subpoena that information and you will not only see the videotape, but you will actually hear what they're saying in the room. So, Seeing as we know that Tyson Fury said in public that he was being defamed and that if he was a different type of guy, he would sue Deontay Wilder for defamation. No, he didn't sue Deontay Wilder for uh, defamation. But according to my sources, he used defamation as an argument to try to get out of that fight. And again, he lost on both counts of his argument. One argument was that the contract expired. Sorry, but sorry, Tyson Fury, you're the one that extended it. Second, that you defamed, he defamed you. Yeah, you definitely got defamed, but I'm sorry, friend, you got called, caught cheating. And why would they be able to prove that? Because they will pull in subject matter experts to show them. And guess what they don't even have to do, even though I, if I don't know this for sure, but I would suspect that they pulled these guys in and pull and say, because Deontay Wilder got all kind of money for lawyers all kind of time people to call in, uh, to call people under oath and, and treat them like hostile witnesses and say, excuse me, do, do gloves do that? This is not a YouTube channel, friend. You must tell me, do you think that, that your glove actually works like that? And they will under oath tell you no, that they do not. Why you're on, when they're on YouTube, they can say whatever they want. But when they get sworn in, sorry, you ain't getting away with no lies. You commit perjury, like, by the way, Tyson Fury committed with the Bo British Boxing Board of Control when he testified that he ate and bought that wild boar meat. He testified that he did that. So when 
again, and trust me, the judges don't miss things like that. They don't miss you, you bribing somebody to commit forgery or being accused of it by the person that was bribed of falsifying testimony in front of the British Boxing Board of Control. When you falsify testimony in the UK and then there's in, in a guy that falsified the testimony then comes in and testifies for, for Deontay Wilder as to your character, dude, they're not trying to hear it. Over, they don't care about the British Boxing Board of Control. I'm telling you, man, the entire time, and the only thing, this is what my source told me. My source told me that the judge, that this is what the judge's take was. That Tyson Fury went to him and says, he cheated me. And he said, yeah, you cheated him, but I'm sorry, you can prove it. What do you want me to do? Yeah, he said you, you he accused you of cheating, and I have the videotapes, I have the evidence, I have the expert testimony, and they all say you cheated. I also have you on tape coming, coming, uh, coming into a, uh, a ring, a boxing ring with your thumb detached. And I also have your toxicology reports for when you tested positive on multiple occasions, I would assume, but definitely for sure after the Christian Hamer fight. So I'm sorry, man. All of this stuff for, for Tyson Fury, in my opinion, is nothing but a scumbag with his chickens coming home to roost. And since this guy went so, so far out of his way to try to not make this fight, and, I, and I'm telling you, I'm thinking he's looking for ways to still get out of it, right? Anyway, it is what it is. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.